This video is going to be about uh, how to pull an engine out of a scrambler or explorer or sportsman. Uh, this all applies. Um, I got two scramblers. Um, I'm going to pull the motor out of that one because that one's locked up. I'm going to rip it apart and see what's going on. Otherwise, the rest of this thing's in pretty decent shape. I know I got the plastics off. So, let me get this guy out of the way here. Get her finished up. It's taking about two minutes and uh, I'll pull that out and I'll start tearing it apart. Alright, this engine was locked up until I tried turning the, uh, the clutch off and uh, ended up breaking it, the engine free. So, um, I'm going to have to take the uh, pull start cover off and hang on to the uh, flywheel and turn this at the same time as I'll end up breaking the clutch. Alright, so uh, I'm going to pull the exhaust off. Uh, make sure you pull your springs and pull them bolts off. I got a nice loud exhaust on this baby, so she should wrap pretty nice. Pull that nut, nut and bolt off. Those springs. Pull the exhaust off. And then uh, we're going to pull that cover off. I'm sure it's pretty crusty in there. Looks like the guy swamped this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll get that uh, we'll get that clutch off. This one's stubborn. Alright, so as I'm... Uh, Pulling that exhaust bolt off, I noticed something. You never know what you're gonna find when you uh, you buy something used. That U joint is busted completely off. I didn't notice that when I pushed her up on the trailer. It's like something else I'm gonna have to replace. That'll be my next video. All right, so I ran into a little snag. I can't get the uh, um, I can't get the clutch off. Uh, and, uh, trying to crank on the flywheel. I know this motor's junk, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to pull the jug off and uh, I'm going to use the fried piston to kind of hold that in place while I'm uh, trying to spin that clutch off. Um, I've noticed this thing's been reworked and uh, whoever reworked this engine, uh, they did a crappy job. I already started pulling off the, uh, the oil or off the carb and I noticed the, uh, the two spacers in between that were missing that go up to the oiler. So I'm going to pull that boot off. I'm going to pull the jug off. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stick a, a bar underneath the piston. Crank on that thing and get that clutch off. I've got a, a motor that I've uh, already rebuilt that's uh, sitting in the basement uh, ready to go in. So yeah, whatever I do to this thing, I guess it's pretty, pretty much junk. I mean, if I turn this thing... I mean, it's, uh, it sounds like crap. <laughs> so. The next step is we're going to take this uh, shift lever off, get that out of the way. I'm going to pull the bolts for the, uh, the carb. There's uh, two half inch bolts that bolt into the head for the uh, motor mount and a 916 underneath here. Pull my radiator hoses and uh, I'll pull that jug off. Oh my god, it's getting worse. Uh, there was a ground strap. Actually, here it is. Hang in here. Uh, I can tell somebody reworked this motor because normally the ground strap gets hooked right here. The ground strap strap is hooked there, and it's split. Um, I don't even know how this guy uh, had this thing running decent. It probably ran like crap. If you don't have a ground strap on the engine, all your electronics are gonna run really crappy. Uh, might not even run at all, but yeah, for other part, uh, the, the more I take this thing apart, the more I start laughing. There's a, there's a lot of crap wrong with this. Uh, you know, I was, I've done uh, quite a few of these ATVs and rebuilt them before, but this has got to be the, uh, probably the worst one I tore apart. You can tell somebody, somebody didn't know what they were doing. So. Alright, let's see how chunked up this motor is. We got the, the four base uh, nuts taken off. I've got the uh, motor mount taken off. Got the radiator hoses off. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're 
we're gonna see. I can uh, see through the uh, the hole where the carb is, how, how fried the piston is. So, I don't even know if I'll be able to get it off with. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. A rusty. It's been sitting for a while. Bearings in the the piston are shot. That was probably the uh, major issue. Uh, bearings everywhere. I'll show you this side of the jug. It's like black. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Black carboned up. Uh, this thing's been sitting for a while, so that's why the jug's rusty. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Piston's pretty chewed up. Rings are fried. That's a shame. The guy went through all this uh, work rebuilding the thing and blew apart. All right, now I gotta try to get this uh, this clutch off. So this thing is seized. I've uh, taken a lot of clutches off, and I've never had one that's so tight. Normally, if I use my uh, uh, pneumatic gun, I can get that to pop off. But I don't know if it's rusted on or what the deal is. So my thought is I'm gonna stick a pry bar or something underneath the piston and crank on this and that's how I'm going to get it off. If I destroy the piston or it's no big deal it's getting replaced so I'm just going to have to be careful doing it. Alright it worked so I, uh, I used the piston I left it hang over the edge of the case here I start cranking on this thing and she popped off. Hallelujah! I can pull the clutch out and pull my belts off. Here. We need the clutch off to get this plastic plate off and then we can pull the motor out and it'll come off. And uh, show you what I did here. I used a uh, three quarter inch threaded rod and I welded a knot at the end and I made my own clutch puller. Works out pretty slick. <laughs> what is that? Starter. <laughs> Something from the starter fell off. Oh my god. This thing literally blew apart. Wow. I've never run across one uh, <laughs> so junky. Good thing I uh, got a different so motor. This one's uh, beginning to be a pain in my butt. So normally you take the secondary clutch off. It is rusted on tight. So uh, yeah, you take that clutch off and you'd uh, pull this back panel off. Um, right now I'm taking the three screws out. I'm going to leave this panel on and I'm going to pull the motor out that way. So uh, there's some little metal tabs that bend over the screw heads. Keep them from vibrating out. Take a hammer and a screwdriver and you bend those out. And then uh, we're just going to pull this plate off. And uh, this plate will come off. I'm going to unbolt my uh, snorkel holes here that goes there. Motor mount bolt is up here and then there's one on the bottom which will be on the other side. So I should be able to access that and uh, yeah we'll get this motor yanked out yet. I tell you, uh, <laughs> riding through water or deep mud puddles this is what you're going to end up with. Uh, Big rusty pile of crap. I thought I'd show you this too while I'm uh, tearing the engine apart. What is that? Water. It's dripping out of the side of the engine. I'm guessing this block is cracked. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so anyway, right there's uh, your bottom motor mount, nine sixteenths inch bolt, and then uh, there will be one on the back side here. If I could get this clutch cover off, I would be able to show you, but not gonna be able to. So I'm gonna have to do this from the top side and pull the motor out. I was hoping this is going to be an easy project that I could show you guys uh, how easy this is to do because normally it is. Pull your clutches off, your clutch cover, take that bolt off the back side, unbolt that and she pulls right out. Um, yeah, I got the rust all over the place. If I could get that uh, secondary clutch off, uh, this job would go a lot smoother. This is the the cover for the side cover for the starter must have fell off. It's covered with dirt. It's just hanging there. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is a this has got to be the absolute worst ATV I've ever worked on. But you know, you learn from it. I I actually think it's kind of funny uh, seeing how things are put back together and. Uh, I find it a challenge, so hopefully you won't have to run into this. Maybe, uh, hopefully your ATV is clean enough where it should just pop apart real easy. And it gets even worse. <laughs> I don't know who had this four-wheeler. They did not even put coolant. That is water from the radiator hose. Which means there's water in the radiator. Which means there's probably... Radiator's probably cracked. Uh, I'm guessing uh, uh, the seals probably blew and water ended up getting into the engine. And he probably started up when it was cold. And that's what happened. <laughs> wow. I, well, I, I just, I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, why would you put water in your radiator? <laughs> That's why they make coolant. Water freezes. Alright, so I got lucky. Um, the one and only break I got out of this deal. The, uh, if I flip this back, right down there is, uh, right below here, there's supposed to be another nut, and that uh, bolts um, be another motor mount. It vibrated off, so I don't have to try to get down there to get that out. So, I pulled the other uh, motor mount bolt, and uh, now this thing should be about ready to pull out. Um, one last thing before I uh, pull the engine is uh, I gotta disconnect the wires going to the stator up here, which, uh, if I follow the stator wires up, the uh, connection here, another connection here. Uh, just follow your wires, just like five wires and unplug everything bring your wire back and uh, then you can pull the motor alright so I also pulled my uh, battery cable uh, the positive and the negative um, instead of disconnecting them from the engine because uh, normally I would but because of that covers in the way I uh, just clipped the uh, wire tie straps and uh, I've got the negative uh, hanging here and the positive hanging here on the engine and uh, I just got to disconnect the, uh, the snorkel uh, going from the clutch and she'll be ready to pull. Uh, let's see what happens. Should just be able to pull it out. Starter is completely gone. <laughs> I don't, uh, not a mess in there. Kind of expected to see parts of the starter laying in there, but yeah, starter's gone.
This was a lazy man's machine, let me tell you. Okay, so uh, yeah, we got the engine out. Um, I'm going to get this all cleaned up real nice. I'm going to clean the frame. Uh, check the fluid, the transmission, if uh, see if there's water in there. This thing's pretty chunked up. I can just take the bang and set it on the floor. One motor removed. Sorry it was such a basket case to do. Um, I was hoping uh, this would be a quick easy project for you guys to watch. And uh, yeah, that, not all four wheelers are as clean as that one. So that one was nice and easy. Pulled the engine out, rebuilt it, put it back in. This one, yay, yikes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do this right. Uh, get the frame cleaned up, get everything all cleaned up nice. Go through the transmission, make sure uh, uh, the oil's clean hopefully that tranny is still good and uh, put a fresh rebuild in and uh, we'll get this baby fired up thanks for watching uh, hope you enjoyed the show it's uh, yeah this one was probably a little interesting for you so um, I guess sometimes uh, things don't come apart like uh, you wish they would and uh, half the time that's usually what does happen so Alright, uh, subscribe to my channel for uh, more Polaris repairs, and thanks for watching. Till next time.